Hi, and welcome back to The Class Must Go On. This week, we'll talk to one of our BFA costume designers, Johnny. He is going to show us how the switch to remote learning has been affecting him and his classes. Who are you and what do you do at FIU Theater? My name is Johnny Mendoza. I am in BFA uh, theater design for costuming. I work in the costume shop uh, as work study, just doing alterations, working on specific garments. I'm a cutter, draper, first hand stitcher, and I'm a student. What have you been working on from home since the switch to remote learning? I started working on my scenic painting uh, class, which is scenic painting and it's online, it's like, okay, like, how are we, how is this going to happen? You know, that, that we, we were all, even Jennifer, we were all like, whoa, okay, let's take it, you know, step by step. And it's been effective, uh, thankfully. So I completed uh, this wood grain, old wood, new wood. I had started already at school, and then we went remote, and then I finished it at home. So that was really, it, it, it wasn't really challenging, that much because I did have the step by steps that Jennifer provided. How have you seen that specific class adapt? Like what are what are things that Jennifer and like your classmates are doing to adapt this class to online? What Jennifer is doing is she is having specific office hours to help us office hours virtually to help us um, if we have any questions, if we just want to one on ones with her uh, to talk about you know, I, I don't know if this is working out. Uh, I ran out of paint. Uh, also, she's very, very on top of us and attentive when it comes to being in class. Um, she wants us to ask questions. She wants us to participate, you know. It has helped us communicate throughout this whole this whole process. I know she is doing like tutorials. Does she do it usually in like regular class environment or is this like a new thing that she's implemented? This is a new thing she's implemented. And the good thing about tutorials is that she she does the demo, right? So she'll do the demo and on Zoom she'll record it, right? So we can always go back and check to see, okay, this is what I can work on. This is the ornament I'm going to do, or this is the page I printed out for the ornament I'm going to do. And I'm going to do this one right here. And the reason I chose this one is because it's already in a square and it has a very interesting look to it. Um, it's got some things that I'm going to have to make up. This bit right here just isn't clear enough, but I've got both geometric and kind of natural elements in it. So I thought this would be a good choice to show you guys what I'm going to do. So then for what I did is I said, all right, my flat is four feet by two feet, right? And I'm not going to put this thing five times. I'm already essentially going to do the corner and repeat four times. I'm not going to do four copies of this. So if you're looking at doing a repeated trim of your piece, you could do it around the edge if you want to if it's a big, easy pattern to repeat, but that could end up being like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times two. That could end up being 16 repeats if it's complicated enough. And that's probably not what you want to do. And by probably, I mean, that's way too complicated. You don't need to do that. Tell me like what parts of the process have changed and like what has stayed the same? For example, for painting, you know, you have to, you have to paint, you have to wait for your paint to dry. And the good thing is though, that Jennifer has us working on two projects at the same time. So it's like, we'll do like the marble, right? With the ornament on it. And then when that's drying, we can work on our illustration project. When it comes to the costume work, it stays the same. It's, you know, sewing here at home, but it's uh, challenging because I have questions, you know. For example, the ditty bags that I was working on, there was there's a pattern but no instructions. So then I was kind of like, oh my goodness, like how I I remember doing this, but it's like I had a mock up and I was like, should I deconstruct the mock up or? But no, I figured it out, so that was good. <laughs> so it was like a trial and error kind of thing. 
Yes. Do you want to talk more about like the ditty bags, why you were doing them, like what it's for? The ditty bags are used for the the shows. They're for accessories. They help for, for all of that to be in there, for it to be organized, labeled, and nothing gets lost, no jewelry, you know what I mean? So this is this is what a ditty bag is. So it has pockets, right? And then in the back, it has a smaller pocket and a bigger pocket. So shoes, accessories, socks, shirts. And these are like for the department? Yeah, yeah, these are for the department. This is what, uh, for what the costume lab class does. Since we went remote, there was, how can we do costume lab online, you know? And then since we went remote, how was I gonna continue work study? You know, thankfully I was able to work on these. They're here, they're 10. So, so that's good, that's good. And I still have to make more, so it's okay. Our students have been proving that no matter the difficulties, they have been taking ownership of their education and making it work. Thank you for joining us today and stay tuned for the last episode of the series next week.